Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. Before we get into this week's dev news, I have to give a shout out to a particularly excellent active trolling on the part of our Surface team here at Microsoft. So a few weeks ago, the Surface Laptop 2 was announced, and I talked about how much I like the new black color. Well, this week, Panos Panay, Chief Product Officer, showed off what some might call my perfect laptop, which is a Surface Laptop 2 in blush gold. Now, for those who don't know me, I'm obsessed with rose gold, like obsessed. And this laptop speaks to me. I would instantly use my rose gold American Express card, and yes, I got the card largely for the color. Um, and I would buy this in two seconds, except it is a color that is exclusively available in China. So I feel trolled and like I need to take a trip to China ASAP so that I can get one of these myself. So for anyone who's watching this in China, I'm insanely jealous. All right, enough about pink laptops that I'm unable to buy. Let's get into this week's dev news. First up, GitHub Universe was this week, and the GitHub team showed off lots of amazing new features and capabilities of the code hosting and sharing platform. But one of the most exciting new features is something called GitHub Actions, which is a new way to automate and customize workflows. So kind of think of this like If This Then That or Zapier, but for GitHub. And actions can be written in any language, and they can interact with the full GitHub API and any other public API. And uh, GitHub Actions are currently in beta, so you can uh, apply on the site to get let in. But at GitHub Universe, a number of members of the community showed off various things that they've written using GitHub Actions. And uh, my friend and fellow CDA, Jesse Frizzell, AKA the Rihanna of Oceans 8 of the CDA team, uh, she showed off how to use Actions to automate open source workflows. And you can see a video of her walkthrough and lots of other examples in the show notes and description down below. It's amazing. But speaking of amazing, the amazing Sarah Drasner, another one of my fellow CDAs, she wrote a great getting started guide for um, GitHub Actions over at CSS Tricks, and you should definitely check that out. Uh, I think the GitHub Actions are going to be a game changer when it comes to automation and CI CD stuff, and I, I can't wait to see all the cool stuff that people build and share. Speaking of actions and workflows, one of my favorite features of iOS 12 is Siri Shortcuts, which is a way to automate a workflow within an app or a group of apps, and then users can trigger that shortcut with their voice or from a share sheet or lock screen. And even better, app developers can build Siri Shortcuts into their apps using SiriKit. But what if you build in Xamarin? Well, Daniel uh, Hendrick has a great post up on his blog about how to use Siri shortcuts with Xamarin.iOS. And if you've wanted to add this capability to your app, you should definitely check out his blog post, which is linked in the show notes and description down below. In other Xamarin news, Xamarin Forms 3.3 was released this week, and the focus is on improving some of the little things that can make a big difference to developers. So some of these changes in this update include improvements to labels, Android image uh, performance and memory boost, and an updated web view for iOS. And you can check out the show notes and description for a link to a blog post that outlines all the changes and a link to where you can get this update via NuGet. In some Visual Studio news, the Visual Studio teams have released roadmaps for what's next for Visual Studio for Mac and Visual Studio 2019. And uh, the first preview version for Visual Studio 2019 is going to be available by the end of 2018. And then the plan is that Visual Studio 2019 will be generally available the first half of 2019. And um, some of the notable improvements that are planned include um, you know, like a better performing and more reliable debugger. Um, it's moving to an out of process 64 bit process, improved search accuracy for menus, commands, options, and installable components, uh, Visual Studio tooling for Windows Forms and W. PF development on .NET Core 3 and, uh, and, and more. And then when it comes to Visual Studio for Mac, the next major release is going to be Visual Studio for Mac 2019. And the team has shared its roadmap and some of the features uh, and changes and improvements that will be its focus in that version. And so some of the target focus areas for Visual Studio for Mac 2019 include improving the performance and reliability of the code editor, uh, support for TFS, both uh, TFVC and Git, better .NET Core and ASP.NET Core support, and better Unity support. And uh, the Visual Studio for Mac team wants your feedback, and you can offer it over at the developer community website. And I've linked to that, as well as a blog post and the Mac roadmap in the show notes and description down below. And speaking of the Mac, on Channel 9 this week, the latest episode of Five Things 
features John Papa and yours truly talking about some tips and tricks for developing on a Mac. And I had a blast with John, so check out this episode. And also on Channel 9, the latest episode of the Open Source Show talks about observability-driven uh, development. And this episode features the team from Honeycomb talking about why it's important to create a community that gives everyone the power to ask and answer questions about code, products, and users. And on the AI show, Seth and Chris talk about getting started with the Azure Machine Learning Service and uh, the Visual Studio Code tools for AI extensions. So uh, links to all these videos are in the show notes and the description down below. And if that episode of the AI show isn't enough to get you excited about Azure Machine Learning, uh, check out a post on the Azure Medium blog from Francesca Lazzari, who's one of my favorite people on the planet, and uh, Jaya Matthew about the Azure Machine Learning deployment workflow. And this is a really great post. It's adapted from a talk that Francesca and Jaya gave at the AI conference in London, so check it out. And uh, while you're at the Microsoft Azure Medium page, you should definitely read Jay Gordon's post and video walkthrough on how to get started with uh, Cosmos DB and Azure. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So uh, usually, um, I try to make my picks of the week something zany or, or out there, some kind of you know, fun service. But this week's a little bit different because Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, passed away on Monday. And uh, the world has lost a great technologist and a great philanthropist. And Bill Gates, who co-founded Microsoft with Paul, wrote a terrific blog post over at Gates Notes talking about some of the things he loved about Paul. And it's definitely a must read. I never met Paul Allen, but uh, now that I live in Seattle, I see his influence all over the city, from South Lake Union to the Seahawks to the museums that he funded. And um, thank you, Paul, for what you did for our industry and our community. You will be missed. Well, that does it for me. If you like this episode, be sure to hit the like button over on YouTube and hit the subscribe button for Microsoft developers so that you can keep up with all of our latest developer and Channel 9 content. And um, in the comments, go ahead and let me know what uh, GitHub action you're most excited to build or you know anything else that, that you want to let us know about. All right, see you next week.